well, the car. So it's hard to love the car, but I love it. Every time I drive it, I feel good. Everyone that sees it likes it. People, I say, go and get in it and have a photo, and people will go in there and they'll be, you know, everyone's got a story. They had one when they were young, or or, or their dad had one. It's just a nice, friendly, happy car. So it's the perfect comedy car. I don't think there's a better car. Well, I reckon it should be a challenge to someone to show me a funnier, more comedy car than that. You know, it's like a noddy car. Coming down the alley, this is the venue, down the alley. Hang on. <laughs> There's Connor. Completely spontaneous, eh, Connor? <laughs> I'm gonna park down there, mate. Right, Connor. Go. Going good, matey. Just chucking a bit of rubbish in the old bin. I really don't like it. It's a waste when your bin's not full. So I like bring some rubbish from home. I'll tell you about my car, Tommy. This car's I call it Tommy Frost. Absolutely love this car. But as you can see, hang on. I must have written on it in marker pen and I can still see it. See through there tonight. Yeah, oh no, never mind. Anyway, I can buff it out, I'm sure. I use it very rarely, but I actually do use it as a ute. I, work, I put shit in it and drive around. It's a happy car, isn't it? Look at it, it just feels, it feels you cheerful when you drive this car. But I thought I could pick comedians up from the airport and things like that in it. You know, be advertising. No one wants to get in it because no airbags, nothing like that. So there's no air con, it's, it's tiny, it's uncomfortable, you know. It does about 80. Yeah, it doesn't go 100. People. <laughs> yeah, no one wants to be behind, behind me because it's so slow. <laughs> but anyway, I don't care, I'll just do what I do. From my perspective, I love that bygone era, really, when life was simpler. When I see photos and images of, the, the 60s and the 50s and I sort of love love all that time really you know I love life now but it's just I miss it's, it's a nice nostalgic feeling I think and when you get in an old car like Tommy it smells a bit oily and that's just a nice feeling it just takes you back a little bit I think to the uh, to simpler times you know when you get your car now I mean the Tommy my car it's got a windscreen wiper that's it does that a choke, no car's got chokes now, so you have to pull the choke out to get it going. It's got a pump action window washer, I don't even know works, so you keep pumping it and pumping it, which is an old washing up liquid bottle. But not, that's all they had. They probably said, oh, to the people that make ferry liquid, can we have, you know, 200 of your bottles? <laughs> Put a little bit of cable on it and make a, make a thing. This is, the wind, this is the window washers, right? I never use them, but look, you keep pressing it, and if you get up enough pressure, eventually some water comes out. But I should really get the number plate in the same yellow, shouldn't I? It matches the wheels, but I don't, I don't know. I might get the wheels painted yellow and the number plate painted yellow. I think that would be nicer. But it's such a cool little car, so small. I don't know if people were smaller in those days. You certainly wouldn't get a big person in here. Forgive me, I've got to answer. That's Jane. Hey, love. All right. I'm just filming Tommy now. Love you. Bye. Tommy used to be. Uh, a name when I wanted to reserve tables for imaginary people, so I've got tables up my sleeve at the venue at Little Creatures. I used to put Tommy Frost, Mr. Frost, Frost T. Yeah, it was just the imaginary name, so I knew I had these tables up my sleeve. And then the, the name sort of stuck, and now it's called Tommy. In actual fact, my uh, youngest grandson is also called Tommy now. Are you coming in the car? Can I fit in it? Yeah, you'll get in it. <laughs> you getting in, Connor? Right out, oh, mate. If I fit. Well, yeah, you'll fit. Oh, there's a policeman there, but they won't. They won't do you. I don't think they'd be doing you. Not, not in a car like this. No. Well, they're not. They, they never get pulled over. Who's going to steal a car like this? Put it that way. No one. Hey. Right. 
I had one when I was about 18. Sold the car, wish I'd never sold it, but anyway, I sold it. And then many, many years later, just thought, oh, I wonder if uh, there's, a, I'd like to see if I could get another one of those utes. I'll tell you the story of what I paid, how I worked it out and bought this car. I Googled Morris Miners, you know, just on a whim one time. And this Morris Miner come up in New South Wales. The guy wanted $12,000 for this car. Yeah, right. And I thought, do you know what? At number one, how many of these do you see? You know, a handful in Australia, literally a handful. And then you think, how many of them are in good condition? Again, even less. And then, what's the odds of it being bright yellow, which is the brand I've got? I thought, mm. 1961, that's my birth year. A 1961 bright yellow Morris Minor in Australia, in perfect condition. For the rest of my life, that will never, ever happen again. I'll never see that. I mean, I wasn't short on money, but I, 10 grand is a lot of money as a second indulgence. It's not as, so um, I said, well, I can afford 10, and I thought it cost me two grand to bring it over from New South Wales, and that's what it did cost. And he said, yeah, all right. <laughs> 10 minutes later, I deposited 10 grand into his bank account. My wife said, you crazy, this could be a scam. I thought, well, you know what, if it is a scam, I will recover from it. But um, it'll be a good story to tell. I've done a few things that could have been scams and it's been great. I phoned the guy up. I like the sound of him. He was a sail maker from New South Wales. His name's Craig. I've still got his phone number in me, in me phone, you know. I don't know why I don't just phone him and just say, just, you probably think I'm a bit of a nutter, but I've put that in the garage. That car's in the garage and my wife's Audi is out in the rain, which is causing a few family disputes, but it doesn't matter. I'll, she knows I'll, Tommy will, I don't want Tommy to go rusty, you know, it would be terrible. A few months later, no, sorry, a few years later, I've done the same thing, I was just Googling. And then a bright yellow panel van came up. I love the look of it, it looked in good condition. I just, I paid six, 16, 17,000 for it. Even though I liked it, I didn't love it, and it was, um, bright yellow. I had them both parked outside in Ad in Adelaide Terrace one time, and I got a fine for buying in a clear way. I mean, I moved one, and I never got the other one moved in time. You know, I thought, oh come on, guys, I was about two minutes over. You know, bloody big fine and all. But the panel van, my God, it was. I spent money on it. I got it. It wasn't in perfect condition. It looked it when I bought it, but it was. It needed new this, new that. There was rust coming through. I kept it a few, and I sold that. <laughs> I'm um, God for eight grand. I think I spent about 10 on it. So it's 20, yeah, that was a massive mistake. But anyway, and it, it shows you, you know, your motivations have got to be sincere. Connor, shall I go? Can I go back, back out to my flat now? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll see you back there, yeah?